According to some scholars, every instance when a mortal encountered the divine God, they were in some way beholding Yeshua. In this understanding, Yeshua is the common factor in every single revelation of God in the scriptures. So we have the invisible God who cannot be seen, and yet we have the visible God, Yeshua, right? Not two gods, not three gods, but still one God. God making himself visible in the person of his son, Messiah Yeshua, breaking into his own creation in a supernatural way, veiling himself in flesh, right? The incarnation. And yet at the same time, God is still all powerful, seated on the throne. And so this is where our minds begin to be stretched a little bit because of the, our, our own natural limited capability of understanding the, the ontology of God, the nature of God, which is what this word ontology refers to. How can one God also be enthroned in heaven yet at the same time uh, manifest himself on earth and yet it be a separate person? How is it that Yeshua in John 1.1 1, 1, is the word that was with God and yet was God, right? How does that make sense? It doesn't make sense to our natural mind. Um, this is a common factor. Every single revelation of God in the scriptures is Yeshua. To be sure, these same scriptures declare, quote, no one has ever seen God, but the only and unique Son who is identical with God and is at the Father's side, end quote. Of course, we know that's those are um, John's words from John 1.18, that same uh, uh, opening passage where he's ex- you know, he's just dropping a bombshell on us. Shema, this whole study is called Shema. Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord alone. The Lord exclusively. He is the only God. And yet now John comes along and says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Right, blows your mind, blows your mind. Uh, after reading this passage from John, right, John 1.18, that um, God uh, has made himself known through the person of his son, the son who is identical with God and is at the Father's side, yet Yeshua is also uniquely the Son of Man. And this phrase, Son of Man, is a title that Yeshua picks up from the book of Daniel, likely, Daniel chapter 7, although it's used earlier in the Tanakh as well, in Ezekiel and other places, this this um, Hebrew phrase, Ben Adam, which corresponds to the the, um, uh, the Aramaic uh, Bar Anash um, that Yeshua uh, picks up in the Greek, which is um, uh, Huias uh, Anthropu. Um, all of these phrases... In, in the most natural sense of the of the fra- use of the word, the phrase simply refers to human being or appearance of a human. Son of man can be interpreted as human being or someone with the appearance of a human, like we would see a human being. You know, are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed? And Yeshua says, I am, right? And you'll see the Son of Man sitting at the right end of power and, you know, coming glory, things like that. So it is very interesting that Yeshua refers to himself as the Son of Man. This is a, we're going to get a lot of mileage out of this phrase, Son of Man, a little later on in my commentary. So listen up. Yeshua is uniquely the Son of Man, yet Yeshua is not the Father. Yeshua is not the Father, nor is God simply Yeshua in disguise. So this is important for us to articulate as well. This heresy that God simply wore three masks, or that um, this deistic notion, uh, again, this is a a, a belief held by um, Oneness Pentecostals, that um, by many Oneness Pentecostals, I don't think all of them hold this, but many of them do, that, that Jesus actually is the Father. And I don't believe that's the case at all. Yeshua is not the Father. So Yeshua is God, but Yeshua is not the Father. And this helps us to understand the roles, and we're going to look at this in a little bit. Uh, God is not simply Yeshua in disguise, is what I'm trying to say. Rather, and I'm stretching human language to its limits to explain this, Yeshua is the Word made flesh, the Word which was with God, and the Word which was God. And I say I'm stretching human language, but... It was John who brought, introduced us to this notion first, right? That in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So it is rather that God, the Word, the eternal Word, became a human being named Yeshua, and we beheld such glory in the person and work of the Messiah named Yeshua. Understand what I mean? Such profundity. Such profundity. 